Hi everybody! If you have stumbled on this live stream, um, my name is K-Mac, and this is basically just a time where I uh, chill out, practice uh, inking methods, and uh, talk about the artist, talk about things in my life, talk about candy, I don't know, talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, in the last live stream, I was talking about Hal Foster and Wally Wood, and, and sort of the theme of those was uh, gender in comics. And part of gender in comics is talking about who is creating the comics, like who is seen as, uh, you know, who are seen as the masters of comics, like who gets to have that like cultural memory, like Hal Foster, ooh boy, this pen. Uh, and... So Hal Foster, newspaper comics, Wally Wood, um, these are really male-dominated areas. Uh, almost every newspaper comic when I was a kid was written by a man. Um, most comic books in America are written, were written and drawn by men. Mad Magazine, uh, my brothers, you know, that I read from my brother, they were all men. But, you know, it's like women existed, I think. I don't know. I'd have to check. 1920s. That was a long time ago. Maybe they hadn't been invented yet. Um, maybe they only got, got invented in the 90s, and that's why things are so bad now. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> if you thought I was serious, like, come on. <laughs> but so it's like, you know, it's like when you start to look for, for people who aren't men who did these things, it's like you find them. Uh, and Nell Brinkley was not a comic book writer you know she she was she didn't do that kind of work she worked for a newspaper and she was a commercial artist uh and and I, I had never heard of her before and i'm not like necessarily surprised also this pen isn't exactly like re recreating her look but we're just gonna go with it uh i find that with these i have to be like with this style of pen it's not as forgiving in a way because it's just like this one line, like I have to be looser with my arm. Um, so Nell Brinkley was sort of turn of the century, not this century, the, the 20th century. You know, remember that when women were invented, she was the first one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm feeling kind of salty and I don't know why. Oh, I do know why. It's because I have to talk about Henry Thaw later, but um, so she, I guess, grew up in Colorado and uh, you know, liked illustration. She didn't have a formal education, but she was recruited by William Randolph Hearst, who was sort of like the Rupert Murdoch of his day. You know, and truthfully, like that time in American history is really similar to like right now in American history in that um, there's a lot of wealthy wealth concentrated in the hands of the few. Uh, William Randall Hearst was really famous for, like, his yellow journalism and that he would, you know, sensationalize everything. There was a lot of, like, technical advancements. This was the time that, like, Thomas Edison was inventing things. So it's like, you know, it's a, it's a time in history. Boy, I don't know if I like that pen at all. I don't know, like, I wonder... I mean, I hate to start over, but, um... And especially since I put, uh the type of pen I was going to use in the description, but I wonder if I just get something with like a little more give to it. Um, that's part of the thing is like figuring out like, how did these people like make these things? And we're just going to go like as small as I can. As pixelated a little bit, but that's fine. Yeah, I, th I feel that feels better. Um, anyway. Uh, oh yeah, William Randall Hearst, kind of the Rupert Murdoch of his time. He's like, sometimes in history class, it's like, did he start the Spanish-American War to sell newspapers? No, maybe, but no, but maybe. <laughs> and and so he, he scattered her in, in, um, in Colorado when she was like really young. And so she moved to New York with her mom, which I'm like, oh gosh, it's, it hurts to see other people live your dream. Like... Like, how great is that? Like, I would have loved that. Like, oh my gosh, be an illustrator, live in New York with my mom. Um, my mom was so cool. She was my best friend. So I'm just like, yeah, that would have been so cool. Uh, and 
sometimes with like lady artists like when you find out like more about them you're like oh it just like kind of highlights how much it sucked to be a lady and you know now that i think about it ladies couldn't have been invented in 1920 because i'm going to talk about a lady that was invented way before that uh, maybe she was the first one but so it's like if you go into art history there's this there's this artist um well okay so if you go if you like study art history especially western western art uh it's like dudes 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 it's like a real sausage fest um and then you get to this point where there there is a lady artist and you're like oh cool or at least that <laughs> i don't want to speak to like art history today like maybe classes aren't like this now but you know if you're talking about like the renaissance no real ladies are going to be in your art history class and then um except there's this artist his name is caravaggio and he was from italy and uh when you learn about caravaggio you're like oh he's famous for like uh what he would do is he would he would paint common people. He would like hire prostitutes and stuff to be like his his models and people were like that was really scandalous and like even more scandalous is that like he was playing tennis and he got like really mad that he was losing and so he like <laughs> killed a guy you know on the tennis court like you do. Um and so yeah, he, he had to like flee Italy. And I guess like eventually the pope like pardoned him for some reason and he got to come back to Italy and like maybe he was doing more bad stuff. And you're like, okay, well, I guess that's just what it was like to be an artist and an Italian at the time. But then you learn about, like, an artist, a female artist who, who did really similar stuff. And, and it was unusual for a woman artist to become famous. I don't think it was unusual for, like, women of a certain class to do art. Um, but it, it was unusual for them to, to be famous for it or be remembered for it. And so her name was Artemisia Gentileschi. And, like, when you learn about her life, you learn that... Um, she was sexually assaulted by her painting tutor and you're like oh that's not as fun as like killing a guy on a tennis court and then you learn that um there was a trial for the for the tutor and his crime wasn't sexually assaulting artemisia gentileschi it was property damage against her father because he had damaged her chastity and so like that that's that was like the monetary it was like it was like a monetary thing and you're kind of like when you read that you're like oh it wouldn't have like there's a lot of times in history where like like what your life was like as a lady like really depends on the men around you uh and it's like you, you don't you know it's like oh yeah but with nell brinkley it, it's not like that it's like she had a great life uh, in theory i mean I, I don't know i wasn't there like for all of it but i mean she had like she was respected in her time she was like compensated for her work uh and and she was really well known um she was she, her work was like oh boy this is gonna be hard like these long curving lines i wonder if i like zoom out a little bit it'll be easier because i don't have to go as far oh that's even worse okay this might take me a while you know what? we're gonna do something smaller <laughs> we'll come back to it i'm not scared i'm just doing something else <laughs> uh yeah so but her work was like really well appreciated at the time and it was really popular and um the newspapers that carried her work sold well and they sold more once she started um and her style of drawing like so uh if we look at at this lady like like she had a really distinctive style and and it, it was it was really really popular this style and uh she would draw like hairstyles and then like women would cut them out of the paper and like take them to get their hair cut hair cut that way uh she would she had like a brand of of curlers that that women could buy um like Zigfield wrote songs about her style of girl like people people like did the hair like she had an in she had influence on popular culture and um you know she was just really well known and it, it just goes to show where it's like there's a market for women for women's opinions for women's takes on things you know if you if, if you if you hire them people will read it uh and 
I wonder if it's just slowing down. Oh boy, this is good. this is hard. Like this is like a really different style than sort of that that brushwork. Cuz I feel like going fast with the line is better. Like, oh, look at the slow line. I wonder if she went slow. I don't know. Again, there's probably like no video. <laughs> Cuz it hadn't been invented yet. Um There were movies as we'll find out later. <laughs> Uh, so one of the things that that she did when she was just starting out was she covered a really famous trial and and she did like courtroom drawings of the trial and I couldn't find any but I want to talk about the trial so it's like oh if the life of like Nell Brinkley is refreshing and like like some of the things that she did were like write about women's rights and like pushing for women in the workplace and like so uh the story of henry henry thaw is infuriating and and i had to kind of like talk myself down a little bit from it because it, it, it i was like uh like reading it just like oh i hate it um i think i'm gonna come back to that i think yeah, I'm gonna come back to that. Like something, something about this setup that I've got is not right, and I don't know what it is. So it's like an exploration for us both, you the viewer and me the inker. Um, okay, so so Henry Shaw was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was born, I think, in Pennsylvania, and he was born to like a like a baron. So it's like before when I was talking about this being an era where the wealth was concentrated in in a hand in the hands of a few. He was the few. Um, and like I don't have like the exact numbers, but he was just like rich. Just rich. Um, and he came from like a really wealthy family. And uh, yeah, and so he turned out to be like a humanitarian who Solve the world's problems, which is why we don't have any problems in the world now. Um, and he was nice to children, and he um, saved, saved me. No, I'm no, kidding. kidding. You're a jerk. He was a total, total jerk. And jerk. And he, was like, he was like, not even not just, like, just like a rich person. person. He, was like, he was like, sociopath. Like, 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 like. And this is and all this like, is all like, 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 deep, deep. Like done, like done a deep dive, dive in guy. Like I've just, like, just like read the basic. But I guess, like, I guess, like his, like when he was a kid, what he liked to do was like grow like, like, things, serve and serve and laugh. Like that was, like that was like, that was, like his hobby. hobby. Um, um, and he was, and like, he was like not very smart, very smart, and get very good grades in school. And like the teacher, teacher, we're all like, like the guy in charge, uh, and he went, he went, like, like he went to Harvard. Like he went to another school. He went to Harvard, and he was, he like got, like got. Expelled in a way where, like, in the Wicked Movie article, it, it says, uh, he had, like, three hours to pack and get out. And I'm like, so he's from, like, one of the, you know, he's from, like, an incredibly rich family. And so it's like, if Harvard's like, yeah, no, um, we don't care that you're rich, you just have to leave immediately. Like, that <laughs> means something. Um... But, you know, maybe once he got out of college, he changed his ways. No, he did not. Um, he just continued being a jerk, and he continued being a jerk internationally. So you're welcome, Europe. Um, he would just, like... He was, like, obsessed with parties and drugs. And, and like, in the Wikipedia article, like, his... One of his... <laughs> he liked doing speedballs, which is, like... Uh, cocaine and opium or like cocaine and, and morphine so he was like you know drugged up out of his mind and he would hold like elaborate parties and he would beat people because that's what he liked to do and his mom would pay them off so like there was this uh this incident where he and you will see this theme again he like lured a, a, a bellboy to his room in london and then he like stripped him naked and, and like whipped him in the bathtub and and uh they hit that you know if you want to do that in like 1910s london it only you only have to pay five thousand dollars to their family after um because that's how it works when you're rich you can just pay people off but that doesn't happen today <laughs> uh he was sort of like he would throw like the wikipedia article describes this like super lavish party that he threw in france 
which I'm sure with like lots of drugs, um, where he like got the most beautiful ladies that he could find and he like invited them over and the, the party cost like $50,000, which is like more than I make in a year. And it was like, like 1910s money. Um, and, and he, yeah, like gave everybody jewelry and he like saw prostitutes and, and so like not a super great guy like just not a super great guy and like his mom kept like paying people off for him and his dad's like worried about his son uh and he's like okay son your allowance is only going to be two thousand five hundred dollars a month in 1910 money which is a ton of money um and i guess eventually when his his father died his his mom like upped his his monthly like when he inherited three million dollars, and his mom inherited like upped his monthly salary to uh, eight thousand dollars, and I like did one of those calculators, and I don't know if it's like right, but it's like that's like the equivalent of receiving a quarter million dollars every month, and uh, he just spent it all as a wastrel, doing drugs and traveling, and uh, and you maybe you're saying to yourself, but the murder? When do we get to the murder? Uh, so he comes back to New York and he, uh, there, he, there's this guy and he hates him. Uh, and cause there's this guy, he's like a, a renowned architect. His name is Sanford White. And he, um, is like the, the toast of society. And he's a member of all the finest clubs. And, and all of these clubs have like denied membership to Henry Thaw. And, um, Henry Thaw is not like, oh, maybe it's because I keep like, kidnapping people and beating them and until my mom pays them off uh no he thinks it's because um sanford white has like blacklisted him somehow and he's like all his all the ills in his life are are from S sanford white and and so he he has this obsessive personality he blames sanford white for everything and he's also in love with an actress and model named um her last name is nesbitt and, and I can't remember her first name, so I'm just going to keep calling her Nesbitt. Um, and he, he, like, goes and sees her play, like, all the time. And, and he, like, showers her with gifts. And, and she's also a friend of Sanford White. And, and, and Sanford's kind of like, hey, um, this guy, like, and in the Wikipedia article, they're like, he tells her in generalities, but not specificities. It's like, yeah, this guy's kind of a, like bad news instead of just being like yeah he's he's like stalking me and blames me for every wrong thing that's ever happened to him and every club that he's never gotten into and it's more likely that he didn't get into them because he like is a sadistic is a like a sadist a, a sociopathic sadist um yeah and so he like is obsessed with her and he like uh goes and sees the play that she's in like a million times and uh he like showers her with gifts and she has like appendicitis and he's like super nice to her and then he like convinces her that they need to go to Europe together and so for some reason he is also obsessed with female chastity even though he's like a super like he hires prostitutes and he he's like a sexual sadist uh but he like so he convinces Nesbitt to go to um Europe with him and and she's no she's not a total dummy she takes her mom but like uh Thaw like like plays them against each other and like um they all fight and like the mom eventually goes back to New York and and, and Nesbitt is just like left with Thaw and then like you know he sort of shows his true colors and he's like begging her to marry him and 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 I think he like just wears her down like I can't speak to like the internal dynamics of their relationship but um, you know, it, you know, it's not a great situation. <laughs> also, I wonder, like, this image is, is maybe low resolution, but I wonder if, like, there's, like, some, like, watery aspects to this part of the hair, mainly because, um, like, it's under a veil, so I wonder if it's, like, that effect. Let's take a look. That looks kind of good. I mean, it doesn't look as good as hers, but, you know, it's there. Uh... Yeah, so, so poor Nesbitt is, like, alone with Thaw in, in Europe. And um, he, like, begs her to marry him. And she, like, no, she's like, well, I know that you're, like, obsessed with female chastity. So, like, like I just have to, like, tell you this thing that happened. 
Um, I slept with that guy you hate. And and I guess like he like like he he went bonkers with that. He he hated it. And he like does this intense interrogation and it eventually comes out um that that White had taken advantage of her while she was drunk. Um, that's what she tells him. And and I, I'm like, believe women, yes. However, I feel like like if she's under like this intense interrogation with this guy who hates White, it, it would be pretty hard to say, oh yeah, we slept together because I wanted to. So I'm just saying it's like, it, it's not completely clear what happened with white and and it's not like like it, in any of the like wikipedia article <laughs> my single source for this entire story uh that it's like it seems like that part is in in any doubt that like she was taken advantage of so so we're just gonna leave that we're just gonna leave that alone oh my gosh there's a something i forgot to say about the parties that he would give like when he used to give lavish parties is that uh his his favorite kind of music was John Philip Sousa marches. So like can you imagine you go to this rich guy's party and he's like doing like speed balls of cocaine and and morphine and you have to listen to John Philip Sousa marches. He liked it because it was peppy. And I'm just like if you one if you don't know who John Philip Sousa is, he like does like patriotic American marches and, and he did he like did like the the themes it's like brass bands and drums and like uh he did like the the theme for like every like type of army like uh, like branch in america and he did like hails to the chief so it's like da 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 i'm just like trying to imagine like being like high off your gourd and having to listen to john philip Sousa marches like i mean then again i mean it's like what else did they have to listen to i don't know literally anything else <laughs> next time i do speedballs i'm gonna listen to john philip Sousa marches um oh my gosh i just like i laughed when i read that because i was like oh gosh and you know since he's rich like he won't let anybody else like pick the music so it's like you have to listen <laughs> i don't know why that cracks me up so much like i just think it's such a like i don't know it's like something you would like like that would be playing at like a parade. Oh. Anyway, so he <laughs> back to the like sexual sadism. Uh, so he finally convinces her to marry him, and and they get married, and and he like they go on a tour of like sites of female chastity, like like they go see where like Joan of Arc did stuff, and and uh. Thaw wrote in the the like guest book like, well if Stanford White has been here had been here she wouldn't have been a virgin and it was like, I'm just like buddy like like, you lured a bellboy into your room and like whipped him naked in the bathtub like what is this obsession like um. Anyway, uh, and so then he like installs Nesbit in a castle and like assaults her like continuously and then he takes her home and then they have to go live with his mom uh, which also sounds terrible and I guess she like ruled the house like uh, unsurprising like this the sadist has a like overbearing mother uh, gee it's funny how that works out um, and she like dedicated her life to like maintaining the family name so anyway, like they don't spend all their time in in like Pennsylvania, and and I guess they eventually they go to New York and they go see this play, uh, at the roof on the roof of Madison Square Garden, and it, in in the Wikipedia article they they make a point to mention that uh, it was like a hot summer night, and and Thaw wore a tuxedo with a great coat and tails, and he wouldn't take it off even though he was like super super sweaty. Um, and I'm just like, wow, this guy is something else. And so, uh, this is maybe the first time he's seen white since he got married. And so what he does in front of, um, hundreds of people is he goes up to white and he shoots him. Like he just shoots him in the face. Like he just like in front of everybody, he shoots him in the face and it's like 
uh, he said something about how like like either like it's unclear from from like crowd testimony that that he said like he ruined my wife or he ruined my life but so yeah so yeah of course if you like murder someone in mainly cold blood in front of hundreds of people you just go to jail right it's over you get the death penalty and the story is over and i'm not salty about anything no <laughs> that's not what happened because he was rich he was like so rich and so he like and and he has like a whole history of of like his mom taking care of his problems so he gets arrested uh and he goes to jail and uh there's this picture of him in jail and uh apparently he like got to bring his own bed so there's like a, a brass bed in the background and he like got his favorite restaurant to cater his meals um and his doctor like was like oh yes it's medically necessary that this man drink alcohol and champagne while he's in jail uh which is sort of like the this is why the rich are different than you and me like they know how to get their drugs in jail uh which actually it kind of reminds me of Lindsay lohan back when she was like going through the ringer of like being in jail and out of jail and and she was supposed to go to jail and and everyone's like she's on drugs how she how's she gonna like live and she got her dentist to prescribe like the exact ingredients of the kind of drugs she took so she got to take her drugs in jail uh, which is nice for her nice if you can get it i guess if i was in jail i'd want to take drugs maybe not speedball like maybe just weed or something um so anyway like so the trial comes up and and the the district attorney is like man um this is the trial that that um brinkley is covering like so she's drawing illustrations for this trial and and she and everybody else like like this is like a huge story and especially like in an age of like william randolph hearst where it's like sort of this yellow journalism like everybody is covering this trial because it's like so nuts and it involves such famous and rich people uh, they called it the trial of the century, which was like big news for like a trial that happened in like 1907. Um, yeah, and so, so the the district attorney's like, well, this guy is nuts. So let's let's not spend a ton of money on a trial and like let's just all admit it, he's nuts. And but mommy, mommy Thaw was like, no, we can't have and and like I guess apparently. And according this, the the way the Wikipedia article phrases it is like, oh insanity like ran in the family, and I'm like yeah no duh like um, something was going on with this guy like, uh, but but she didn't want him to be labeled as insane, and so uh, he went to trial and and he's like convinced that everyone's gonna be like oh yeah it was a really good idea to just murder that guy in cold blood because you know female chastity is so important. Um, and so the, they have the trial and I'm going to say the first trial I'm going to spoil it uh, so the trial happens and it's a hung jury and like Thaw is shocked he's just shocked that people don't like automatically agree that he had every right to kill that guy because you know that's, that's like a that's like a crime worthy of death um Boy, that's a hard one. That's a hard line to draw. Uh, yeah. So, so they go to the second trial, and and uh, his attorneys like this time they're like, okay, what if compromise? We'll say we'll plead to temporary insanity, and the and the district attorney's like, fine, we'll take that. And so he gets like sent to um, a mental institution. And the thing about being declared temporarily insane... Actually, okay, there's even more to it than that. So he's he's declared temporarily insane. And it's like, if you remember the case in America, or if you're not American, like, there was this case where, like, a kid who wasn't of legal age to be drinking alcohol... Gosh, I don't remember the details. I should have looked it up. But I, it was something like... Like, he, he was not legally allowed to be drinking alcohol. And he, uh drove drunk and like killed a bunch of people like a like a significant number of people like a, like more than one less than five uh and um 
Their defense was affluenza, that he was, like, too rich to know the consequences of his actions. Uh, and, and it worked, and people were, like, so mad. Uh, and it, it, I feel like eventually that backfired on him. But so anyway, so yeah, so he's declared temporarily insane. And uh, I feel like I'm not even getting close to her style. Okay, he's declared temporarily insane. And the thing about being temporarily insane is that you can then be like, well, I'm sane now, so you gotta let me out of here. Um, and then also at the time, like like people were so taken by this idea of like this temporary insanity that he like had been driven insane by like his wife's lost of chastity. God, I'm like so salty. So salty. So salty. But people were like, oh, isn't it? Like, cause, cause some people really did buy it. That he, like, they called it like an American, like Americana Dementiata or something where it's like, like justified defense of a woman's purity. And it was just like barf. Ugh. Gross. So he like, is like, oh yeah, guys, I'm sane. Or, gosh, I'm, I'm kind of missing up the timeline because, like, I think, like, maybe that doesn't work at first. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm just gonna get out of here anyway. So he, like, escapes the asylum by just, like, walking out. <laughs> because he was never insane in the first... Or, well, I don't know. He knew what he was doing when he killed that guy. I'm just gonna say that. It, it wasn't like, like, I feel like now. Like, I've watched enough Law and Order to be like, well, it really only counts as temporary insanity as if a police officer was there. You would have done it anyway. Although, I guess he probably would have because he thought he was justified. But being feeling like you're justified in killing someone isn't a legal defense. Uh, yeah, so he, like, escapes. And then, and then people are like, no, you can't do that. And uh, he's like, yes, I can. I'm in Canada. And he, like, hires, like, the, the most amazing Canadian attorney and uh, eventually they're like, no, you have to come back. And so he comes back and, and eventually is is declared sane. They're like, oh yeah, this guy. Let's, yeah, this guy, we're gonna, we're gonna, who boy, we're gonna, we're gonna let him out because I'm sure he's gonna be a productive member of society. And then, you know, once he got out, he really got his act together and he, you know, was a philanthropist and, you know, the only reason you don't hear about him is I can't even make up the lie anymore. Of course he didn't like lead a productive life after that. He just went on being terrible and uh and also like smearing White's name and and people like really like bought his his act and and like maybe like there were songs written about like how brave he was for like committing that cold-blooded murder. And then it comes out that he, like, lured a teenage boy to New York and was like, yeah, I'm going to help you, like, be a person in the world. And then he whipped him. Then he whipped him. And, yeah, I don't know, like, the, all the details of that. I, you know, I'd have to go into it more. And so, like, he got... You know, he, he was found guilty of that. And I think he had to, like, also... Not only was he found guilty, he also had to pay a lot of money to the, like, teenage boy that he, like, whipped. Um, I don't know if it was... A, I don't know if it was a sex thing, but it was probably a sex thing. Uh, so, yeah, he had to go to the... And then he's like, oh, no, I went temporarily insane again. And they're like, oh, ho, ho, this keeps, like... <laughs> Shame on you, you and your continual temporary insanity. This time it wasn't because of your wife's chastity. It was just because, I don't know, it worked before. Um, so it happens to him again. And then again, they're like, when you are claiming temporary insanity and you're not actually an insane person, it turns out it's pretty easy to prove that you are not insane. Um, and so he gets like released again. And I'm just like... Come on, like, okay, she doesn't have an iris in this one, but I wonder, ugh, no, that looks awful. She's right. She was famous for a reason. Um, these lines are actually pretty hard, like, they're so small, like, you have to get them all exactly, I, I'm not saying that what I'm doing looks bad, but I am saying it's, like, I feel like she had a, she probably had, like, an easier, looser style than what I'm doing, like, I, I feel like my lines are very laborious, um, yeah, so, uh, after the second time in, in the asylum, he does, 
he does calm down. And he like moves to a small town and he like joins the fire department for a little while and you know, he doesn't lure a teen any teenage boys to his place, like and whip them with a jeweled whip. Like he he's like, Yeah, that's not my that's not me anymore. Uh, and he lives to be like 76 and dies of a heart attack. So it's like, cool. It's nice that all of those things happened for him. That he didn't have to go to jail. That he got away from with killing a guy. That he had enough money to like sway public opinion. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna mention that like, like this was like such a big story. So like, this was the time of like Thomas Edison and so he like within a week of the murder had like made a movie about it so it's like people were all over this story and and this is where you know this is one of the ways that that Nell Brinkley got her break was covering the story and 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 writing about it and drawing it for the paper so it's, I guess that came out of it I mean what else are you gonna do uh she, uh, I think, and it's, it's interesting, she wrote, she, she wrote and illustrated, so she, like, wrote some books, or some, some really popular illustrated books, and so I guess it's, it's, I don't, I guess you wouldn't call it a comic book, uh, I don't know what the definition, like, what makes it a comic book and what makes it, like, an illustrated book or a graphic novel, I, that's something I'd have to, like, look up and, like, clarify. But she, um, she wrote a whole series and she called, like, the girls that she drew Bettys and, and the boys or the men that she drew Billies. And so she, she had a whole series of, like, Betty and Billy in World War One, and, um, and they also had a dog. So I'm just like, it's, it's an easy sell. Like, your soldier boyfriend, your cute dog, you get to go, like, have fun wartime adventures, uh... If Wally Wood was drawing it, everyone would take their tops off. <laughs> but, yeah. Henry Thaw aside, like, it was just nice to read that she had, like, a successful career. I guess she she died kind of young from, it said she had a long illness, so I don't know what that was. Like, I, they, they didn't have anything more with that. And she was buried, like, in the same cemetery as her parents. And I don't know that she ever, like, got married or or you know like what that was all about but um yeah woman illustrator from the past who had by all accounts a reasonably nice life okay maybe i am gonna do the thing like the Ugh, this makes me nervous i just like these lines are so long like like i wonder if she's just you like sometimes in, in drawing they're like oh you should use your whole arm um, you know, it's like, and, and make a quick movement. I wonder if she just had, like, really practiced movements. And, like, since I'm trying to, like, get her line almost exactly, like, I feel like that's probably, like, the wrong way about it. I don't know. It's definitely, like, a... I'm glad that this is why I like the digital medium, that you can like go back and do it again, that you're not like just locked into that first line that you made. You can like practice until you get the right movement. Yeah, I don't know, maybe you've heard of, of Nell Brinkley. I'd never heard of her before, and I'm like someone who's like interested in this kind of stuff, so in some ways it's like 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 yeah, I don't know. Was she in the Illustrators Hall of Fame? Like, is that a thing? I think it is, because I think, I think uh, Hal, Hal Foster's in it. Um, but I think if it's like if I had the choice, like I would want a career like hers. Like I, I don't like, I don't have any like aspirations to be famous after my death. And that's like a really like, ooh, that I could be famous after my death if, you know, hmm. Like, I don't want to be like Van Gogh. Like, or, okay. Let's try and phrase this in a way that seems like realistic, where it's like, uh, 
would you rather? It's like, would you rather be an artist that is unknown in your lifetime, but your work is beloved after you die? Or would you rather be an artist that is well-loved in your lifetime, uh, but is forgotten when you die? And I would rather be well-loved in my lifetime. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously, like, the, the best of both worlds, where it's like you're loved in your lifetime and, and appreciated and showered with praise and money and, like, uh, you know, and then after after your death, people are like, oh, there's a reason, because all that stuff was so great. You know, it's like, that's, like, preferable. But if I had to choose one or the other, I would rather be acknowledged in my lifetime. Because I want to enjoy it. I want to, I would want to, like, see the impact that, that my work had on people. Uh, yeah. That's Nell Brinkley. It is interesting, like, the, the style. I feel like there is something about the faces that, I don't know, like, I'm, as I'm, like, practicing drawing and, like, like, trying to figure out my own style, and it's, like, especially if I want to, like, draw people in comics, it's, like, like, what what would my style be like what how would I do it and um well I think hers is beautiful it's like it's there's just something about it that's not quite there for me like like and I'm not sure I mean it's probably it's like the thinness of the lines in some ways but like there's others where like the faces she draws aren't quite proportionate like there's just something about them that isn't pleasing to me but I do think, she, like, the eyes, I think, are really pretty. Maybe it's the, the way she draws lips that I don't love. Um, but it's like, I'm always on the lookout. I'm like, what like what's, what do I think is a beautiful face? Like, or, or an interesting face? Or a face that I want to, like, spend time with and draw a lot? Like, what's a, what style elements do I want to incorporate? Uh, yeah. I think Nell had her finger on like the the style of the day like like to be able to draw in a way that people want haircuts like your character it's sort of like the the Rachel if you were alive in the 90s uh Jennifer Aniston's character on Friends everybody wanted her haircut I feel like we haven't had a haircut like that in a while that everyone's just like oh I got to get that haircut I think for for a while seemed like like an asymmetrical haircut for women was really popular um, or, like, a lot of people, like, adopted that haircut where, like, they just shaved, like, one side of their head. Um, there's also kind of, like, that infamous Karen haircut where it's, like, I think taken from Kate Gosling. And, boy, isn't this interesting to listen to. Me describing, me just naming haircuts. <laughs> You're welcome. Um... I like this sleeve, though. Like, it's so puffy. I think there is something, like, kind of... not anatomically right. Like, just the way that her arm is so flat uh, and then curved around his neck. I think, like, her... El I, don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like her shoulder might not actually be in that position or, like, it, her arm might not actually be that way. But that's just, like, me, like... Like, it, obviously, the illustration works. Um, and it's beautiful. And it's, like, beautiful and feminine. Uh, yeah. I, I like her work. But in terms of, like, brushwork, I'm, I'm less interested in this, like, super thin line. I like, like, the, the thin thick that, that Hal Foster has and that, that Wally Wood has. Um, yeah, so I... I don't know that I want, like, if I would adopt this sort of delicacy of her style, but I do think it's nice. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll come back to it. I just feel like it, like, the, the thick and thin, like, has a cool effect. Like, it, it shows the evidence of the, the, the inker's hand in a way that this doesn't. Um, and I think especially, like, I don't know, there's, there was a trend in design for a while for mono weight line. And maybe that's, that's what I'm reacting to, to be like, oh no, that, that trend is like, 
it's already peaking, so it's over. Uh, like, it doesn't make any sense to do more mono weight lines. And I don't even know that I would, like, categorize this as a mono weight line, but, um... Yeah, there's just some something about the the delicacy of, of her line work that I'm less interested in. I don't know. I should be so lucky to draw such beautiful things. Boy, these lines are so long. This is a really detailed, like, this is a really close-up piece. It's, like, super detailed. And I'm, like, yeah. I don't, I don't know what it is if I just, like, practice drawing this kind of line more. I mean, I'm trying to do it fast. But maybe I just need to slow down. I feel like it's, like, less, I don't know. It's more labored. More room for, like, fuzzy? Fuzziness? I don't know. Like that, or like you could tell that the line's been drawn, like, slowly. Um, she does have more interesting brushwork here in his hair. Uh, but I wanted to, like, just focus on the fine lines. And especially, like, in the background, these, these fine lines. Like, this, if you're, like, pra looking to practice inking, like, this is great practice. Like, all this background stuff. Uh, just because it's, like, drawing a lot of straight lines next to each other. Uh, ugh, and you can see, like, me avoiding the hair because it's hard. <laughs> Uh, I like downloaded a background music for this, so I, I and in the last live stream I did, it didn't really play um, that well, or like you couldn't really hear it. So I hope, uh, but it's meant to like kind of fill in the quiet times. So I'm hoping that as I'm like getting kind of quiet, that is taking its place, taking the place of my voice. Let's see, how long have I been doing this? I got a kind of a late start today. Um, because my old job was like, hey, do you want to do some contract work? So I've been like working extra this week. Which is good because I like money. Maybe I can get Clip Studio with the money I'll make from contracting. Um, yeah. But it just means like starting this a little later. Well, I didn't get that far, but I did do the face, which I think is the, like, the important part. There's something about the eye, like, even if you look at hers, uh, oh, that's my old inking. Okay. We're just gonna take off mine. Like, even if you look at hers, like, she doesn't really have a pupil for the eye, which I think is interesting. She's just got, like, the, the sort of the hints of the iris. I think... Yeah, but I think this looks all right. Um, it's it's obviously not as nice as hers, but um, it was fun to look at her style. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stop for now. Um, thanks for joining me while I saltily recounted the tale of a very rich man who got away with everything and was grateful to read about a lady artist who um, actually seemed to have a decent life. So. That's my live stream for today. Thanks for listening if you tuned in. Um, it was great to have you. I used to work at a marketing agency, so I'm contractually obligated to say like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great night, everybody. It was great to spend some time with you.